Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the channel. And today I'm going to be trying to recreate what some might call a predecessor to the jet engine. This is known as the Steepa Caproni or the flying barrel, because look at it. It's literally a barrel with wings. The proportions don't make any sense for a plane here. So thanks to this comment for pointing me in this direction because uh, the story behind this thing is actually kind of cool. I've been doing a lot of failures of engineering on this channel. And although this project got essentially abandoned, it actually wasn't really that bad of an idea. The, the inventor, he kind of knew what he was doing. Let's dive into it. All right, the history of this thing is already starting off amazing because this was designed by Italian engineer Luigi Stipa. He's a real Italian named Luigi. <laughs> it's perfect. So apparently Luigi himself claims that his intubed propeller, how he called it, was the ancestor of the jet engine. And apparently he believes he was unjustly excluded from receiving credit for inventing the jet engine. So Luigi was born in 1900. What a year, what a round year to be born in. I guess 2000 is even a better year. Oh God, people born in 2000 are 22 right now. That doesn't feel right. So what's cool about Luigi is unlike some of the other inventors that we've had, he actually had degrees in civil, hydraulic, and aeronautical engineering. So he kind of knew what he was doing when he designed this plane. He was working for the Air Ministry. Why do they have such cool names? There was like the, what was the, the thing from a previous video? Ah, yes. The War Ministry's Experimental Laboratory. <laughs> for some reason, just having the word ministry makes it sound so mysterious and magical. Probably because of Harry Potter and the Ministry of Magic. What makes something a ministry? The work or vocation of a minister of religion. He is training for the ministry. Yeah, see, in the gaming context, this just means you chose mage class. So being part of a ministry of anything is just magical. Let's just ignore this second definition. It's probably not important. Okay, anyway, back to the plane. So Luigi, working for the Air Ministry of Magic, began to formulate a new theory on how to make an aircraft more efficient. As a hydraulic engineer, he knew that velocity of a fluid increased as the diameter of the tube through which it passed narrowed. Kind of like how a jet engine functions. And that is how we came up with this intubed propeller design, which is basically a tube that narrows as the air flows through it, compressing that air and providing more force. So they actually built this thing and October 7th, 1932 was apparently the first test flight. So you're probably wondering if something that looks like this actually flew well. Well, this is actually where it gets kind of cool. So apparently because of the design of the tube, it demonstrates demonstrated a better rate of climb than conventional aircraft with similar power, and it had a very slow landing speed of 42 miles per hour. And it was actually noticeably quieter than similarly powered conventional aircraft, so it had a huge amount of benefits compared to conventional aircraft at the time. But there was one major drawback. And that's kind of a pun intended because the main drawback was the drag. Apparently it produced so much drag that it pretty much offset all of the other benefits of this thing. But Mr. Luigi here was a smart man. He didn't design this thing as the final product here. This was just a stepping stone to test his idea, which was intended to be used for multi-engine planes, apparently, where you would have multiple propellers, and supposedly the drag wouldn't be as big of a deal if these were smaller intuned propellers placed on a larger overall aircraft instead of a tiny single engine aircraft like this. And when you kind of imagine what that would look like, you're kind of getting to a jet airliner at that point. So I can see why he feels like he deserves a little bit of credit for essentially inventing the jet. So he ended up turning over his prototype to the Air Force and they just didn't really d develop it further. So unfortunately, his final vision was never realized in the way that he had intended. And in 1992, which is actually two years after I was born, so we were alive at the same time. But in 1992, according to this article, he remained embittered at not being recognized as the true inventor of the jet engine. But don't worry, Luigi, I see what you've done here, and it's my turn to try to recreate this flying barrel and see how it performs in a video game. Okay, welcome back to Trailmakers. Now, uh, we do have some distinct disadvantages here. Uh, the major one being airflow does not work the same way in Trailmakers as it does in real life, so we will not be essentially replicating a jet engine 
concept like the original design did. Air is not going to get compressed through this tube at all because air is not being pushed through the tube. Believe it or not, this game does not have trillions and trillions of air particles to push around. Our simulation abilities are a little bit more limited than that. So another issue I'm definitely going to run into is uh, torque. I may have to do a double propeller with counter rotating propellers to get rid of that torque because if I use these propellers, which I think are going to be really good for the scale of this thing, it's going to make it a massive flying barrel. Um, we are definitely going to have a lot of torque, but I'll try it with just one at first. It shouldn't be too hard to add another one later. But man, look at the size of this. This is going to be massive for a barrel. All right, let's see how well I can create a circular barrel around this propeller now. I can't make a perfect circle, so I got to make sure whatever I do create doesn't end up conflicting with the propellers themselves, which this looks like it might do that. All right, let's do a quick test here. Is this capable of spinning? Oh my goodness, that's so good. I really thought there was going to be collisions. Oh, this is going to be so great if I can get this thing to fly. But it's so, it's such a big barrel. I'm worried it's going to be too heavy. At least for one propeller. I don't know. Uh, this is going to be rough. I really hope this thing works because that looks so cool. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, you see how massive the torque is on these things? All right, well, we're off to a good start. This is the this is the start of a barrel right here. So apparently there were actually two seats. So I'm just going to put two seats on top of this thing. Going to be historically accurate here. And of course, the original design had the barrel taper off to create the compressed air jet engine effect. But since that is not a piece of physics we're actually dealing with here, I'm just going to keep it simple and keep the barrel the same width throughout. It's just going to make it a lot easier. Oh no, this is so big. Look at the... <gasps> I can simplify this. I am already at complexity limit just by doubling this up, but there should be... I should have some simplification abilities here. I just got to convert all the individual wedges to the four wide version of them. That's going to cut down a lot on complexity. All right, there we go. I've made this thing so much bigger and it's only 347 blocks right now, so way better efficiency. But I'm a little bit concerned this is way too heavy did i make this too long too no i think this is about right these seats look tiny compared to this here let's see how, how much how much thrust does this have that's not looking good i don't think this is going to be able to fly guys I, I do not think this is going to be able to fly after we put everything on it i might have to double or quadruple up the propellers at this rate all right let's try to slap these wings on here now the wings are pretty big I did not anticipate how massive of a thing this was going to be. And it's all because of just how big my propeller is. I mean, this is this is really only option I had. If you're not familiar with trail makers, I have this propeller or I have this propeller. <laughs> and this one is just too small. And this one's just too big. I need the just right propeller. But I guess go big or go home, am I right? Hopefully this vehicle can take us home after we're all done with this. Okay, now for the tail fin. How am I gonna do the tail fin? Okay, I think I kind of got the tail built out this is such a weird looking plane like in real life and how i built it in the game um but so we got our control surface on the tail we've got our control surface on the wings and i didn't put wheels on this thing yet but place your bets now do you think this is gonna have any ability to fly whatsoever there we go i don't even see it moving forward like all it is is torque. This is just a roll mechanism. There's no movement forward whatsoever. This thing, there's no way this thing is going to fly in this game. <laughs> the question is, how many propellers are we going to have to stack up to get any type of performance? All right, I got two propellers that are going to counter rotate to prevent that roll effect, I hope. Uh, and also hopefully give us some more propulsion. So let's see what happens. Uh... Is there any horizontal movement at... Okay, you know what? Let's put wheels on this thing. Give it a chance to roll across the ground. I just really... I don't think we're going to get anywhere. I think this is this is way too heavy. We don't have a lot of control over the weight of our materials used. And I also don't have the advantage of compressing the air through the tube like the original design intended. But it's not going to stop me from trying to get this thing off the ground. There we go. Look at that. Wheels. Now place your bets. Are we going to get any forward momentum at all? Let's find out. Here we go. Oh, we're rolling. We're rolling. You think we're going to be able to fly? It supposedly had a really, oh, like a really low flight speed. No way. No way right now. <laughs> 74 kilometers an hour. 70 kilometers an hour. 68. 69. 
So one of the one of the things about this is that apparently it was so slow as well. I didn't even try this the turning yet. Oh, there's some weird torque happening when I try to turn. Oh, it is so weird. I cannot believe we're in the air right now. Oh man, the yeah, the wing flaps, there's some issues with the center of mass here. Because whenever I turn, it yaws me bad. All right, so I switched to miles per hour because apparently this thing had a flight speed, a minimum flight speed of around 42 miles per hour, which we're actually pretty close to right here. And apparently its top speed, however, was 81 miles per hour. So that's as fast as this thing could go was 81 miles per hour. And oh boy, man, my wings, my wings have the worst yaw when I try to roll. That is so bad. All right, you know what? Let me just paint this thing up so it's not just this red tube, and I'll try to make it be able to go 80-something miles per hour. Uh, maybe I'll quadruple up the engines and see if that gets me any faster. All right, I painted it up, and I've doubled up the propellers. There are now four propellers here, all uh, canceling each other out with torque, and we haven't really gotten that much speed, that much of a speed increase. I mean, we're in the 60s now with horizontal flight, so it is better, but much like the original, we've got some drag issues. I also have the issue of uh, massive yaw stuff going on when I just try to roll, which makes it really hard to aim where I'm trying to go. I didn't actually put real yaw controls in this thing, uh, mostly because the way I designed this tail right now, it would just cause some collisions if I tried to put yaw controls on that tail. So I'm just dealing with what I got right now. This is a slow barrel of a, like barrel is just the perfect word. Barrel feels like a very not easy thing to maneuver around. And it feels like I'm flying a barrel right now, basically. But let's see if uh, it's good enough to come in for a landing. I mean, it's it's kind of one of its strengths was being able to land at a really slow flying speed. So here we go. Coming in for a nice... Okay, I, I ran out of runway. I didn't actually get down on the ground. You know, on the count of all of the lift this thing produces so efficiently. Okay, now trying to turn around is an interesting thing because I yaw in the opposite direction of the direction that I'm trying to roll. So it's a little bit counterintuitive on how that works. But, all right, we're turning around pretty effectively. Okay, now I just want to turn to the left, which causes me to yaw to the right. Don't worry. Oh, boy. Yep, it caught, this, it's so hard not to oversteer because when you're correcting, you're also uncorrecting at the same time because of the way the yaw works. Uh-oh, this is not good. Uh, don't worry, we're fine. Oh, it's fine, just a scratch. It's just a paint. Nothing even fell off. I mean, the, the original, that it's not accurate historically because the original design was apparently very easy to, it was very stable, very easy to control. Um, but there we go. Like, oh no, 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 we're fine. We're fine, just doing some fancy landing maneuvers, doing some drifting, Tokyo drift, I Italian drift. Well, I gotta be honest, I did not expect this thing to be able to get off the ground. I really didn't think this thing was going to fly when I started building this massive barrel, but uh, Luigi had some good ideas. Even in Trail Makers, they were still viable. This thing's able to carry itself through the air pretty nicely until I have to turn and, and fly where I want to go. But if I just go in a straight line and don't roll or anything, it flies real nice. I like it. You know, and just for good measure, let's show off with one more flawless landing. We have a good trajectory. Real good trajectory. Don't ruin it now. Here we go. Here we go. Ooh, that was an even better landing. Very well done, Luigi. Well, there you have it. The flying barrel. It actually worked. I can't believe it actually worked. So keep those suggestions for really weird inventions throughout history of stuff you'd like to see me uh, try to recreate in video games. If you enjoyed this, you'll probably enjoy some of the other recreations I've done that you can find on the end screen right here. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.